talk about the West Side Block. The West Side Block was a group of politicians from Chicago who were owned and operated by the Chicago mob uh, and managed by Murray Humphreys from Chicago. Roland Libanati was one member. Jimmy Ducey was another. They were really in charge of the group. Uh, they were long-term members. Libanati was photographed with Al Capone and Machine Gun Jack McGurn at a Cubs home game, and they asked him why. And he said, well, Al treats me with respect. Not a good reason to be seen with that. He also referred to Paul Rica as a charitable man and a true patriot. Libanati served in the State House for 22 years, six terms Republican, the rest is a Democrat. The Kefauver Committee actually called for him to be with, with called from office, that he was just corrupt through and through, that they said his true loyalties were to the mob and had nothing to do with the people he represented. In the meantime, the West Side Block, by 1949, they were a real power at the Capitol in Illinois. They uh, had blocked any any bill that could possibly harm organized crime in Chicago. 1947 and then later in 1949, they, brought, they had five bills and brought them back each year that were introduced to improve the administration of crime control. Uh, the block killed them all. It was backed by the Chicago Crime Commission, these bills. They were good, solid bills, but they killed them all. William John Granada, he's called Johnny Granada, was this urbane attorney, handsome guy. He was a member of the family, the Granada family. They were powerful Republican politicians on the near west side. Granada's brother, Peter, was a state's representative. He was also a good member, member in good standing on the West Side Block. Their sister, Ursula Sue, had been the secretary for Eddie O'Hare, and then later she was his fiance, but he was killed before that happened. Uh, Johnny Granada was a GOP on the 27th Ward GOP committeeman. Uh, he was a member of the State Industrial Commission. This is a guy who had the smarts to do anything he wanted. He didn't have to become a crook. He studied business admin from DePaul, graduated from Northwestern. It's a tough school. And he got his uh, law degree from the University of Illinois with honors. In 1948, he was a GOP candidate for circuit court clerk. Uh, the, uh, the election was just a month away when they found him face down in a clay pit on 125th and Kidsey Avenue. He'd been stabbed in the neck and in the back of the head. One blow of whatever it was penetrated his skull. There was a knife found near the scene, but they probably used an axe, is what the coroner thought, to kill him. So the speculation was that Johnny Granada and his brother, they refused to swing votes that they controlled on the west side so that the Capone mob, or what had been the Capone mob, could make a good showing in the upcoming election. There was probably some inner fighting, too. In other words, they just weren't going along and getting along. Uh, so they killed him. His estate was worth $130,000 when he died. Bear in mind, $1 was at a value today of about $13. So it was a good amount of cash. His attorney, by the way, was Marvin Bass. Marvin Bass would be shocked, another politician, uh, candidate, actually, would be shotgunned to death by the mob in 1950. Peter Granada... Uh, had been elected to the House of Representatives. Uh, and his opponent in that race, Stanley Kuntz, successfully contested the election. Granada had originally won the race by a thousand votes, but Kuntz successfully showed by fraud and mistake he had been denied, been denied 1,000 straight votes on the ballot. Congress reviewed the ballots. They found that he'd been denied actually of 2,300 votes. And they declared him the winner. Uh, Granada ran again in 1932, but he lost. Granada stayed in the House of uh, Illinois House of Representatives from 1933 to 73. He died in office. 